going to start praising the Lord. Uh, stand if you want to. Uh, that'd be up to you, but I can tell you, we're in a Baptist church now. We will, we will keep order, and we're going to, but if you feel like running, run a little bit. If you get out of order, I'll let you know, okay? But if you feel like shouting, shout. I don't see nobody call you down for shouting, okay? But if you want to raise your hands, I'll raise my hands with you, amen? I want to give God glory, and I don't care who knows it. And I want to tell you that He is the only God. He is the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. What about you? So I want to give him a little glory this morning, and I hope you do too. And I want you to know this. They ain't nothing better than him. I've tried it all. They ain't nothing better than him. Whew, can I get a witness? Amen. Come on, brothers. How many names can I use to explain the love of my Jesus, the life that he gave, and so many times will I praise you today, I lift up my life, cause you're always the same.
Check one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to sing a song. Uh, it means a whole lot to me. Because without God's mercy, I just don't know where I would be uh, without it. Like Brother Anthony was talking about, you know, I, I, did, I don't deserve his mercy, but for some reason, he seemed fit to die for me. So be much in prayer. What the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you believe me now. He turned my whole life upside down. He took the old and he made it new. That's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome His goodness and mercy And the power of His blood And I'm so glad that my freedom Wasn't based on what I've done But His goodness and mercy And the power of the blood choices made that I regret I'd still be lost but for the mercy of God now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. And I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done, but His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Oh, the power of His precious blood. Oh, My Savior carried. Now I've been made free by the mercy of God. Was the grave meant for me? Where my sin lay buried. Now I stand redeemed by the mercy of God. Was the cross meant for me? That my Savior. the power of his blood and I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done but his goodness and mercy and the power of the blood but his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood
if you all know the words, you can sing along with us. All my words fall sure I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs 
as I often do. But every song must stand, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah, hallelujah So come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on, my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Oh, come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, my broken heart keep bringing me back to you again sometimes I fall apart but you're always there just like a friend just like a friend there's no doubt about it, I'm on my way home. I'm not yet where I'm going, but I'm a long way from where I was. I hear a choir of angels cheering me on. I'm not yet where I'm going, but I'm a long way from where I was. Thank you. 
Someday I'll dance on golden streets and ride on angels' wings. There's no doubt about it, I'm on my way home. I'm not yet where I'm going, but I'm a long way. If you have any doubt where you're going to spend eternity, you can have no doubt about it today. And it comes in the name of a person. His name is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? A man that did everything for you, that made the way. He came uh, from a virgin, birthed this earth as a baby, only to grow up, to be uh, betrayed beat upon, hung upon a cross to die for you and put in a tomb and we know that uh, 50 days ago, right, the tomb uh, was open, the stone was rolled away and he arose forevermore making intercession for you and I sitting on the right hand of the Father. You know what? I can look at you and, and, and only you know between you and God if you have a doubt. But I can tell you right now it's for me, not for what I did but what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. I have no doubt about it that heaven will be my home. Not not of my goodness, not of my goodness at all, because you know what my righteousness is? Filthy rags. And I can tell you right now, it's made me a better dad, it's made me a better husband. I can only imagine what kind of man I would have been without Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. That I know that there's people in heaven that I want to see. There's no doubt about it that, that Jesus will forgive you today and save your soul if you will call upon him. Amen. There's no doubt about it that there's a Holy Spirit that's urging you to come on to Him. I can tell you right now, if you want to erase that doubt from you and be able to tell your children or your siblings or your spouse that you have no doubt about it that heaven is your home, don't wait to the altar call. Come now in the mighty name of Jesus and amen. You know, there's probably people here that's got a doubt. Got a doubt. Do you know the best thing that one of the best things that my mama gave me is a promise that I will see her again. You see, she's already made it. Now I gotta get there. 
And the best thing that you can give your family is that promise that one day we'll all be together on that glorious day on the other side. Amen. So have no doubt about it today. Have no doubt about it. Right, Brother Anthony? He visited you yesterday, right? There was no doubt about it. You say, is Jesus calling me? Does he really want me saved? Yes. He is calling you, and he really wants you saved. From the youngest man, boy, or girl, to the oldest man, or boy, or girl in this place. He is calling you. No doubt about it. I tell you what, you going to play another one? What are you playing? You know, one way to thank God is to erase that no doubt about it. Won't you, a pastor, if they want to have no doubt about it, can they come to you during this song? Brian says that, you know what we all do is just go ahead and stand up for I thank God. Pastor, is that out of order? If you feel led, will you stand up with us on this song? Come to pastor if you need to talk to him. Young ones, old ones, mommies, daddies, come to him. Say, I want to have no doubt about it. Jesus is calling me and I want to answer. And if you want to dance around, we, hey, that's welcome. Hey, we'll be dancing around. What does it say? The angels are, are gathered around cheering you on. They're standing. They will, oh my God. They will celebrate. They will celebrate with you talking about a heavenly course. Come and walk this out right now. You picked me up. Turn me around. You placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. Because you healed my heart. You changed my name. Forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior, I thank God. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this vagabond. I try with all my mind I can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know He told me that I was not alone Got no choice to believe My doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind So so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving No, you ain't welcome here Now till I walk streets of gold I sing of how you saved my soul This way where sun has found his way back Oh, oh, oh. pick me up, you turn me around You place my feet on solid ground I thank the master, I thank the savior Because you heal my heart Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. Oh, I thank God. 
Hell lost is another one. I am free. I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost is another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Yes, hell lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. Oh God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. God. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're, you're so good to me. Everybody sing it. gracious it's good today isn't it church let's go come on let's give a big hand clap of praise i'm gonna let these boys pray for me real quick down just a little bit that well tur- the, Eric says turn me up I say turn me down just a little bit but I can tell you this Lord have mercy it's good isn't it it's good today I feel like that the ground is fertile there's people here that we've been praying for there's people here that I know need Jesus there's people here that I know have something to praise the Lord about Anybody got something to praise the Lord about today? Is that you? If that's you, raise your hands. Don't don't sit on your hands. Raise those hands. Raise holy hands to the Lord. The Bible tells us that if we have something to say, the Bible says that let the redeemed of the Lord, what? Say so. We should say something. We should say something about what, oh goodness gracious, that, that, that did come off. Okay, we're going to come back just a little bit. How about this? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. How about that? Okay. That, that, whoa. That's it, isn't it? All right. Well, I got something to praise him for now. How about that? Hey, what I want to tell you, I'm so glad that we had just a wonderful session of praise. Today. Aren't you glad? Don't you get something out of a service where you just... You praise the Lord because what happens when you praise 
is you're elevated above your circumstances. You all know that, right? You get past the things that are weighing you down because when you praise God, it, it lifts you up to a higher level. Gosh, I, I want you all to know something. There's some people in here that you're not getting to your next level because you're not praising the Lord the way you should. Can I get an amen? Hey, anybody in here ever had something that you went through, a, a hard time or a, or, or a, a death in the family or, or just, just financial burden, whatever it might be, and you just start praising God? Maybe get a little dance on? You maybe raise a hand or two? You, you maybe just cry a little bit? Hey, what happens? Do you feel better? Does your burden lift? Come on. I want you all to know that maybe today you've not experienced the change to, to that next level of, of where you're supposed to be in your life because you're not giving the Lord the praise that He deserves. Amen? Maybe we need to be praising Him a little bit more. I'm so glad that my daughter Lauren's in the back. She's uh, going to be running uh, the pro presenter today. So, Lauren, go ahead and go to that first slide. I can tell you, this season is pretty special, isn't it? We've got some graduates in our church. I know we celebrated them last week, but let's celebrate them again. Is that all right? I see, uh, I see uh, Cassidy Rowe, our, our resident Wildcat. Who's, who's going to be cheering for the Lady Wildcats this coming year? I know I am. I know I am. I'm excited for her. She is actually getting ready to leave uh, this week. I know Mom and Dad are sad, but they also are are so proud, just like the rest of us, we're looking forward to big and, and bright things from her. Uh, and I can go on and on about our, our graduates this year. Not just Cassidy, I'm sorry Cass, we're, we're very proud of you, but we're proud of all of our graduates. I know Kendall Wright is gonna be going to Kentucky as well. And we've got several others, Brother Tyler Robinson, he's going to uh, Pike to play golf. And, and I know I'm missing one, who am I missing? Uh, McKenna, McKenna, where's Kenna? She, hey, she's here. She, does, she don't like to be pointed out, though. So we're not going to. Graduate. What does that mean? It means we go to the next step. It means we go to another level, right? That's what graduation represents. And I like the, the idea of graduating in gratitude. How many of you all are thankful? Just a thankful people. I, I can tell you, for me, I, we, these two right here are, are, are thankful, but for me, it's the opposite. What I normally want to be is I would rather complain than to show gratitude, right? Uh, how many of you all know about uh, the Sunday crowd after, after church? You all ever heard of that, the Sunday crowd? They go to these restaurants, and the waitresses and waiters, they're usually like, oh, my gosh, the Sunday crowd's here. That's the way. Hey, Sister Leela, uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but that, I, I've heard about the Sunday crowd. A lot of times restaurants go, I, I would do anything before I would serve the Sunday crowd. And that is sad. Because we have the most to be thankful for. We have the most to be joyous about, and yet sometimes it's like we're baptized in pickle juice, amen? It's like we don't know how to act in public. It's like our mommies need to spank our hind ends, right? And so we need to graduate in gratitude. So thinking about that, I wanted, uh, Lauren, go ahead and go to that next slide. It's, it's our scripture, one of our scriptures for today. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm just going to read uh, for a little while if that's okay. It says, for the Lord thy God brings thee in a good land. How many of you all feel like you're in a good land? How many of y'all realize that we live in possibly the greatest country in the world, and yet we act like we don't? We act like we don't. We've got all these wonderful things. And, and, and Moses here is telling the children of Israel who have been in the wilderness for 40 years that you're getting ready to graduate. You're getting ready to go to a place that is good. The Bible says that it's a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. Y'all have heard it. Thank you. Good. I'm so glad that we got some Bible readers up in here. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills. Let's keep going. Verse 8. A land of wheat, barley, and vines, and fig newtons, and pomegranates, and oil, and olives, 
honey nut Cheerios. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. How many of you all have food in your cabinets right now? How many of you all got shoes on your feet? Hey, have we thanked him? Have we thanked the Lord like we should inside of our lives? Thou shalt not lack any, anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest mine or dig brass. So you have everything that you need. Now you may have to dig, you may have to work a little bit for it, but you've got everything you need. Let's keep going. Verse 10, oh, this is a good one. When thou hast eaten and are full. Man, how many times have we eaten and we've been past full? Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has. Let's keep going. I want to keep going. Beware that thou forgot not the Lord thy God in uh, not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command uh, during that day. Let's keep going. Verse 12. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built godly houses and dwelt therein. How many of you all have a nice home to live in? How many of you all have everything that you need? This is, this is a reminder. I hope you all understand. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and your stock and your bonds, that they increase. That I'm just saying, how many of you all have more than what you need? That's what it's saying. And all thou hast is multiplied. Then thine heart, it'll be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. How many of us have forgotten where God brought us from? How many of us have forgotten what God has done for us, taking us from a miry pit, taking us from uh, killing ourselves, taking us from the ditch? Some of us. Some of us. Hey, we've got some testimonies in here, y'all. We need to remember how we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb from the house of bondage who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and droughts wherein there was no water. How many of us have been through some things? Who, go ahead, brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? And in the midst of that, there were great miracles, Right? In the midst of our trials and our troubles, God performed great miracles and brought us out. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. How many of you all know that we've got a place to go to? How many of you all know we've got a heaven to gain and a hell to shun? I want to tell you something. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. Just like what that song, No Doubt About It. Brother Jason, that's the song we can shout about a little bit because we've got a place to go and it's only just begun. And now say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me to this well. Don't, don't think it's you, folks. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. I want you all to understand something. The, the, the goodness, the blessing that is following you is not of your hand. It is not because you worked real hard it's not because your daddy worked real hard. It's because the Lord has had favor on your life. It's because the Lord is doing something. He's doing a great work inside of you, inside of your children, your children's children. And that's the only reason, folks. So, I got a few things that I wanted to share with you. One of them is this little bitty chair. Y'all ever seen a chair like this? Y'all ever seen one? Y'all ever been to a family dinner and the, and the grown folks sit over here? What's this? This is the kitty table, right? Y'all have a kitty table at your all's family get-togethers? I'm about to show y'all something. A six-foot-five grown man. Lord, help this chair. Go back to six... Uh, go back to 10, verse 10. 
when thou hast and you are full, then shall the Lord, then shall then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. What that's saying is that when you have gotten God, this is a kid lesson for you all. When you all have gotten something good from God, then we should say, what? Thank you. Thank you. How many times have you thanked God for things that you prayed for that have come to pass? How many times in your life have you looked back like Brother Anthony was talking about and you're living in a place what you prayed for? Anybody in here? I mean, I'm living in a place that I... Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for... It's on my feet. Thank you, Lord, for the clothes on my back. Thank you, Lord, for, for my eyes to be able to see, for my ears to be able to hear, for, for Brother Eddie who taught me that my hands can raise for the Lord even though I don't have strength. Thank you, Lord, for the water that magically appears out of my faucet. Thank you, Lord, for... Go ahead, sis, go to that... Next slide. No, 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 no. For the. Tell you what. For the. Hold tight. For the provision. Thank you, Lord, for a church that puts up with a crazy person. Thank you, Lord. About four crazy people. How about that? Right. Everybody's looking at at Brother Eric after they go, yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for a place where we can worship without persecution. Thank you, Lord, that we are in a place where I have family who take care of me. Thank you, Lord, for when I get old, I've got children that will take care of me. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things that are inside of my life. How many of you all have thanked the Lord today? Have you thanked Him the way that you should? Anybody got something they are thankful for in the house today? If you've got something to thank Him for, hey, don't be silent. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We've got something to thank Him for, church. We've got something to say amen for. Amen means you agree. Amen means you should, you should say I believe that the Lord is good and He's doing something inside of my life today. You all got a few of things like that inside of your life? I hope you do. Because if you don't, you're not looking. You're not looking. You got to be looking. Because when you are, your eyes are open to the fact that the Lord is moving inside of your life, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. You can't unsee the mountain. You can't unsee the sun. You can't unsee just the goodness of God that flows from Him every single day. Friends, I hope you all see that He has given us everything that we need to thrive inside of this life. I hope you see that. If you don't, come and talk to me. I'd love to talk to you about how good God is because we can just talk from now until eternity if you really want to, if we really look hard enough, can I get an amen? All right, that's about seven. I hope you all are thankful today. Now, this next table, since we're, since we're talking about graduation, we're not going to stay at that kiddie table. We're not going to stay there for the rest of our life, right? You all want to be mature, don't you? You all want to grow. You all want to become full-grown believers in Jesus, don't you? Because that's part of what we're called into as a church. I, hey, listen, it's not Brother Eric's job, it's not Brother Jason's job, it's not Brother Johnny's job or my job to spoon feed y'all. Y'all need to grow up. I'll just say it. Man, it's hard. That's a hard saying, but we all got some growing to do. We got to grow up. We can't stay here for the rest of our life. We can't stay at the kiddie table. We need to become 
full-grown believers in Jesus. And what that means is that we may experience some things that we don't like. Man, y'all ever, y'all ever uh, been to a funeral? Y'all ever heard a real particular scripture? Y'all ever heard Psalm 22? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Y'all ever heard that before? He makes me to lay down in green pastures. We're going to hear the back side of that where we talk about some things that we don't necessarily like inside of that. It's, it's good when he's the shepherd and he leads you and he shows you where to go and everything's good, but when everything is not good, that's when it's not good, right? They don't call it not good for no reason. It's not something that we like. It's not comfortable. We want to be comfortable, don't we? As Christians, as human beings, we want to be comfortable. We, we don't want adversity. We don't want problems. We don't want issues. We want things to come easy and natural. But what we don't understand all the time is it's natural to have adversity. It's not natural to be comfortable. Go ahead, sis. Let's finish Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm going to make, I'm going to Appalachian that up just a little bit. Is that okay? Even though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Wait. You telling me? that I'm supposed to be okay with the fact that God disciplines me? Are you, are you telling me that I'm supposed to have comfort in the fact that I'm not going to get what I want? But, but I want to be here. I don't want to grow up. I want to be like this forever. How many of you all know that we're going to go through some things inside of this life? Raise your hand. I want, to, I want to see how many of y'all know we're going to go through a thing or two. And it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. And we're going to have to lean on something. Why do you think he's saying that rod? Because you've got to lean in. You've got to lean into the fact that you have a relationship with something that's bigger than yourself. Keep going. Verse 5. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Are you saying that there's going to be enemies? Deanna, are you telling me that there's going to be adversity, which means there's going to be adversaries, which means there's going to be people that don't like me? Are you kidding me? I didn't sign up for that. Right? How many of you all recognize that just because you say you follow Jesus, that there are people that are going to hate you. Know that? Jesus said, if they hated me, if they hate you, recognize that they hated me first. So friends, just by making your allegiance to Jesus, you've made enemies. But I want you to understand that the enemies that David's talking about may not be the enemies that we think about. Brother Jason in Sunday school was talking about how we should have confidence in our Lord. The only way we have confidence in our Lord is that we trust Him. The only way that we trust Him is if we have faith in Him. So I want you to understand, one of our enemies that we fight is inside of ourselves. It's called doubt. How many of you all have doubt in your life? How many of you all know that the doubt that we have is an enemy? Because Jesus said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. And if he said that, we should put our faith and our trust and our confidence in that. How many of us do that all the time? Because my hand is going down. I don't. So when he says that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, that's my doubt. That's my anxiety. That's my sin. That's all of the 
the, the issues that come with being a human being. That's my greed. That's my uncertainty about tomorrow. Y'all got that? Or is it just me? That's my insecurity in the fact that I, I want to be like, and I want people to go, oh, hear that from Brian? The only way that happens is in the presence of my enemy. Who am I looking at? I'm not looking at my enemy. I'm not looking at them. I'm looking at Jesus. I'm looking at the fact that he is the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm looking at the fact that he, if he says something, I can put everything that I own, every bit of my being, every bit of my health, I can put my confidence in the fact that Jesus will do what he says he's going to do. How many of you all have done that? Because that's what that means. I've wondered what that statement meant for a long time. But it means that in the midst of all the trouble inside of your life, you're looking forward. You're looking at Jesus. We also know about another man that walked on water. Man, the only, only two people that I've ever seen in Scripture walked on water. Who was it? It was Jesus and it was Peter, right? And we see Peter stepping out of the boat. I bet he was ginger. I bet it was, I bet it was real careful-like at the beginning, right? But then as he got going, he's like, walking on the wall. Brother Johnny, I bet he started high-stepping. Maybe, maybe a little shuffle. Maybe you never know. But here's the thing. I can tell you this. The minute he look, took his eyes off of who? Jesus. What, what did it say? He sank. He sank. So the minute, let's take a lesson from Peter, who is, again, somebody that I can relate to, and I bet most of us can. If you take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to sink. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do. So make sure that when you're in the presence of your enemies... Make sure that you keep your eyes focused on Jesus because that's what happens with that second part. Your cup will run over because he's anointed your head. He's anointed you with his blessing. And in the midst of your enemies, they will serve you. They will serve you. Think about that for a second. Hey, one of the things that I love about Jesus the most is that he takes the thing that you want nobody to know about, and it'll, he'll make it into your testimony. He'll make it into something that you can draw other people to Jesus with. Sister Keitha, he'll take something that, that, that is so scary, and he'll turn it into something that helps people relate to the fact that Jesus brought you through it. How many of you all know Jesus is bringing you through something? You all know that? You do. I hope you do. Let's look at this next slide because this is what I really like. Okay? Just click it one time, sis. Even though, even though I'm going through a difficult time, even though my mommy died, even though I got a cancer diagnosis, even though my finances are a mess, even though I don't know where my next paycheck's coming from, even though... I don't know how to take care of my wild child. Even though, even though, in the midst of that even though, Jesus wants to show up and show out. Y'all know that? I want you to know that Jesus wants to provide His presence. Have y'all noticed that when Jesus comes around, things just start to make sense? Y'all don't know. Let me give it to you in a different way. Whatever my life thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with 
my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I want you all to understand that when Jesus is there, you can have peace. Sometimes in our life we don't have peace. But if you look to Jesus, if you allow him to be the peacemaker, that's one of my favorite things that Jesus does. Can I get an amen? Is that he creates peace in the storm. Y'all, y'all remember that story in the Bible where, 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 where the waves were boisterous, the Bible says? It says that they were, they were so just unsettled. Y'all ever had your life be unsettled? Unsettled. He provides that passes what? Understanding. There shouldn't be peace, and yet there's peace. There's, there's enemies all around you. There's trouble all around you, and yet in the midst of that trouble, you can have a peace that, that, that doesn't make sense. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. The, y'all Christians know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all, y'all true believers, y'all, y'all that, that really have gone through something and you know what I'm talking about. It's like, Lord, you showed up. I don't know why I'm okay, but I'm okay. Right? I hope you all have felt that. I hope so. Whew. Good stuff. You know, there's one last graduate you got to talk about. And I want you all to know that this one is not the most easy. It's actually, you know, we've talked about Moses, and we talked about David with the, the 23rd Psalm. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about Paul. A little bit. I hope you all have read your Bible some. Book of Acts. Pretty much the whole New Testament. Paul's the main writer. And something that I hope you know about Paul is most of those letters, when he's writing them, where is he? He's in prison. He's in chains. So, so you see the kitty table... The grown-up, mature table. The next graduation. And I hope we never get I hope the Lord comes back. But I want you all to know that persecution, it's around. People are... Say mean things about you. Talk bad about you. How many? Anybody been persecuted? Knowing the Lord, I have. I hope you know that it's not just like happening in a foreign country. It happened right here, right now. So Paul, Philippians, he says this. He's talking about somebody who's preaching Jesus. Okay. The one preached Christ of contention. That's saying he he's preaching them. preaching Jesus and it's against me. Not too sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bond. Keep going. But the other of love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. So we know that Jesus is our defender, right? He's our stronghold. But look at this. This is maturity on another level. This is like PhD level maturity. Cass, if you go down there and you become a doctor, uh, Kendall, wherever you're at, if you go down to UK and you become a doctor, I, first off, I want to come to you because I trust you. I, I like you. Uh, I, I'd say you probably got some people here who would go, but you also would know more than me. And so Paul, he knows more than me. Listen to what he says. It says, what then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. I want to explain that because that's kind of a 
tough thing to understand. I want you all to know what that means. It says, saying, no matter what, it doesn't matter if it's done against me or it's done in a way that I don't like or if it's done in truth. I can preach. Jesus glorified. That's what he's saying. And therein, to rejoice. Yea, and he's saying, and I. So even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of heartache and hard times, if we've got to go through tough times, if we've got to go through things that we don't like that cause us to be bound or cause us to be in a situation that brings dishonor to us, how many of you all know that sometimes as a Christian, people are going to just disagree with you they're going to talk about you. They're going, to, they're going to try to put you in chains. They're going to try to do that. But the Lord, in the midst of that, still wants to do a work. Still wants to do something amazing. Look, go ahead, sis. It helps me to understand sometimes when I go through something to think about the because. Lord, I don't, I don't always understand tough times. I don't always understand going through difficulty. I don't understand trouble in the workplace. I don't understand trouble at home. I don't always understand trouble when it comes to church stuff. How many of y'all know that this church isn't perfect? Y'all realize that, right? Thank you, Brother Eric. I know you know. Okay? Here's the thing that I'll say about church is if you think that you're going to a perfect church, as soon as you walk in, you mess it up. Right? That's what I try to remind myself. So I'm like, okay, we're good. Okay. It's not perfect. I don't have to try to make it perfect. Okay? But we, as we have problems, as we have heartache, as we have things that don't always make sense, the because helps me. Because when I think about that, I realize that he's doing something greater. How many of you all know that in troubled times, that Jesus wants to do something greater. Greater. That's exciting to me. I, and I think that's what Paul was trying to get at in that scripture is, even though I'm going through this persecution, even though these chains are a part of me, I'm going to believe that Jesus is doing something greater. And guess what? How did, how did you hear about Jesus? If you trace it back far enough, it's from our dear brother Paul. Because he was the preacher to the Gentiles. So without his persecution, you would have never heard about Jesus. Let's go ahead and click it one more time. Perfect. That's what the because of represents. Because... I believe that even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of heartache, even in the midst of not understanding, even in the midst of persecution, Jesus has a purpose that he's going to accomplish inside of this world. And I can tell you this, until the whole world hears, we will not go to heaven. We won't. We will not. So I don't care what I have to go through. I don't care what we have to endure, Deanna. I don't care, church. What is going to happen that we're not going to like? I'm going to recognize that because of that purpose, I'm going to say, yay, amen, Lord, do what you must because I want to get out of here and I want to go home to you. Anybody feel that way? Anybody want to go to heaven? I want to go home to be with Jesus. I, I don't want to die. I would much rather him come back and, be, and, and take me out of this world. I want to go out like Elisha. You know, like a whoop, 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 you know? But here's the thing. If I got to go through pain, if I got to die, that's okay because I know Jesus has a purpose and a plan for it, and I know that through that I'm going home to be with him. Friends, I hope you all, I hope you all see that. This, is that all of them? Give it up for Lauren one time. Come on, Lauren. Thankful for my girl. Okay, I'm going to ask the singers to come. I want you all to realize something, too.
that all these things that I've talked about, all of them, they only pertain to people who have put their hope and their trust in Jesus. How many in this place would love to see somebody give their heart to Jesus today? I want that more than anything. I want you all to know that it matters to this church whether or not you are saved. It matters to my family. You know, Lauren, Aubrey, Deanna, me. It matters to us whether or not you're saved. We want you to be saved. Why? Because we want you to have the same promise that we do. It matters to me. It matters to me that you know the author and finisher of the faith that I'm talking about because I know that if I can put my trust in him, the reason I know that is because he's not a respecter of persons. What he'll do for one, he'll do for everyone. Amazing thought to think. You know, if it's me, I like Brother Johnny. So I'll do something for him. But there might be somebody down the road that I don't like. I would say somebody in here, but I, that would be rude. I don't want to do that. Because I like everybody in here, I think. What I'm getting at is we have bias. God has no bias. God, God made you a whosoever. You all know what that means? You all ever heard John 3.16? For God so loved the world that whosoever... Oh gosh, that's a good word. I want y'all to, I want y'all to feel that. Feel that, that whosoever, because what happens when you become a whosoever and you realize that you are, is you realize that that second part's for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I don't want to forget 17. God came not into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be Come on, y'all read your Bible. I love it. Let's go. Let's stand up. Let's stand together. The girls are going to sing. I'm going to call Brother Eric to come, and then I, I may come back. You never know.